Hi everyone. In this session, we are going to look at the other limit cycle oscillations, overflow limit cycles. What is overflow limit cycle? Actually, in fixed point addition of two binary numbers, the overflow occurs when the sum exceeds the finite word length of the register used to, to store them. The overflow in addition may lead to oscillations in the output which we are referring it as overflow limit cycles. The overflow occurs when the sum exceeds the dynamic range of number system. That is when a binary fraction format is used for computing the range, uh, the dynamic range is minus 1 comma 1, the overflow can be explained by considering a 4-bit binary fraction number in 2's complement representation. So, the possible numbers for 4-bit representation can be taken as an example. So, what is the dynamic range? It is minus 1 comma 1. Let us add two numbers plus 3 by 8 and plus 5 by 8 in two's complement, right? So, this is the equivalent of binary value. While adding these two values, what do we get? 1.000, which is actually, uh, uh, which is supposed to be plus 1, but due to the overflow, it has become minus 1, right? This is actually the sign bit, right? So, what happens? It, it becomes minus 1. Actual sum we have to get is plus 1. So, the input-output transfer characteristics of a 2's complement adder uh, is actually shown in the figure. Look at this figure. It has been plotted between x and f of x. So, what, has, what ha happens here is the overflow oscillations can be eliminated if saturation arithmetic is performed. So, what is saturation arithmetic? The characteristics of the saturation adder is actually as shown in the figure. It swings from minus 1 to 1. Uh, uh, in saturation arithmetic, actually when an overflow is sensed, the output sum is set equal to maximum allowable value and when an underflow is sensed, the sum is set equal to minimum allowable value. So, this is actually the magic, right? So, the saturation arithmetic introduces non-linearity in the adder and the signal distortion due to this non-linearity is very small if the saturation occurs infrequently. So, this is actually the 4 bit 2's complement uh, numbers. Now, uh, what, is, what is the process or what is the procedure that we are going to follow to prevent this overflow? So, first one is scaling to prevent overflow. The, there are two methods to prevent overflow. The one is saturation arithmetic and the other one is scaling the input signal to the adder. In saturation arithmetic actually what we do is undesirable signal distortion is introduced. In order to limit the signal distortion due to frequent overflows, the input signal to be added can be scaled such that the overflow becomes a rare event. So, let us just look at what is saturation arithmetic, right? So, let x of n is equal to the input to the system and hk of n is the impulse response between the input and output of node k and yk of n is the response of the system at node k. Now, what is yk of n? yk of n is equal to hk of n into uh, convolution of x of n which is equal to the summation of m equal to minus n infinity to plus infinity hk of m into x, x of n minus m. So, while taking the absolute value of the equation, absoluting is taking the magnitude, let the maximum value of the input be ax such that a modulus of x of n minus m less than or equal to ax. So, now in the place of this x of n minus m, we are substituting the maximum allowable value ax. Now, if you substitute, the if, sub, if suppose the dynamic range of the computer is minus 1 comma 1, then modulus of yk of n is equal to is lesser than 1, which means ax into the summation of m equal to minus infinity to infinity h of m is lesser than 1 or simply ax can be calculated uh, uh, lesser than 1 divided by summation of m equal to minus infinity to infinity modulus of hk of m uh, as shown in the uh, right. So, now uh, summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity yk of n square. Uh, yk of n square, uh, uh, this is another approach 
actually this approach is to scale the input so that so now what we are doing is we are scaling where s is the scaling factor now introducing this equation is for scaling so s is the scaling factor now using parseval and the parseval theorem and residue theorem the expression for the scaling factor can be considered as is a squared is equal to 1 divided by from this equation 1 divided by the summation of n equal to minus infinity to infinity hk of n the whole square with 1 divided by we know what is the residue theorem huh? 1 by 2 pi j closed integral of s of z into s of z inverse into z inverse into d z so s square is equal to 1 divided by the summation of i equal to 1 to n the same residue of at z is equal to pi where is so s of z is the transfer function seen between the input to the system and outputs of the summing node k right so there are two different possibility of structures can be drawn by, for the scaling uh, one is second order direct form two structure of an ier system so second order system can be drawn like this hope we all know already we have seen in ier filters how to draw the sort of structure for direct form two right so this is for a second order filter here we are considering instead of y of z we are considering s of z s of z is actually the scale hmm? s of z see this is the s value s of z is equal to w of z divided by x of z which is equal to this side alone is calculated cask another way to represent a second order system is cascade structure of ir system with two second order direct form two structure in cascade right so uh, two structures can be cascaded like this and the scaling factors can be obtained as sa of z is equal to w1 of z divided by x of z and uh, yes b of z that is the next one next structure yes a of z is equal to this sb of z is equal to w2 of z divided by x of z where now find out what is h1 of z h1 of z is actually equal to y1 of z in the structure lendu paranga huh? y1 of z divided by uh, sa into x of z so obtain the formula by using the coefficients which we have obtained already we will get what is sb of z this is actually scaling right now let us look at an example for the digital network shown in the figure um so this is actually the graph given find h of z and scale factor s not to avoid the overflow in the register a1 right so in the figure the output signal at a1 is w of n so this is the output at a1 on equating the input signal a1 to w of n we get so if the output we are considering y w of n in that case what will happen go go through this uh, flow graph and uh, find out the equation difference equation now, now it is s not into x of n plus uh, 0.509 into what is this a delay element so w of n minus 1 so taking z transform on both you get an equation for w of z divided by x of z right similarly on equating the input signals to the output node from the same diagram if we are now finding out the equation for y of n and transforming it using z transform we get w of z by w y of z by w of z is equal to this hence the transfer function can be obtained by using w y of z divided by x of z obtain the transfer function now for when, now so we are supposed to find out the scale factor right s not z s not square is equal to 1 by 2 uh, divided 1 by uh, 1 by 2 pi j closed integral that is our parseval now applying uh, that function s of z is equal to w of z by x of z now using residue theorem apply there is since only 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 one pole inside the unit circle that pole is p is equal to 0.509 substitute for the residue theorem and find out what is the value of s not so now s not is equal to 0.8608 thank you so much